Hey everyone, Jenny here with Sipping Streams Tea Company and today I wanted to share with you um, the Japanese green tea called Kukicha. And I might be mispronouncing it, I'm not Japanese, I'm actually Chinese, but it's a Japanese green tea that if you're not really into the seaweedy flavor of Japanese green teas, which can be very strong sometimes, this is a great alternative and you still get to experience a Japanese green tea. So this Japanese green tea is actually made from the stems and the twigs. I just waited out for you. The stems and the twigs of um, Sensha and Giroko and it is actually a very nice flavor because it's kind of the leftover pieces but if you have a really good sensha or gyroko to begin with, this will also be a very, very nice tea without the bitterness and with that, that harsh seaweedy flavor that happens sometimes when your temperature is too hot or you steep it too long for a nice, delicate Japanese green tea. So since it is much larger pieces and you'll be able to see these little twiggy pieces in there, those twiggy pieces make it really easy to infuse. So if you have a tea ball or something that kind of is big or large holes in it, it is a nice um, tea that will not go through the holes when you infuse them. So I'm putting in about 2.5 grams and I just weighed this out on my gram scale. And I'm just gonna get my hot water to being about um, 175 degrees. So if you'll notice here, some of the stems kind of poke out a little bit, but when they swell up because they're infusing in hot water, they'll be just perfect. So I have my mug here. I'm gonna get my warm water. I'm just gonna pour it over my tea. So whenever you're making tea, you're wanting to pour your tea or your water over the tea leaves so it infuses evenly. Now, if you get some little floaty pieces of tea, that's perfectly fine. Um, I actually put in just a little over 2.5 grams because my mug is about 10 ounces versus eight ounces. So you can see this beautiful bright green color already happening um, for the extraction. The liqueur is developing into this beautiful color. So when you steep your tea, and it's a green tea, you want it about 175 degrees and two to three minutes. Now it's a, if it's a really delicate um, gyroko, you might want to actually use lower temperature water and perhaps um, maybe just one minute steeping. It's all depending to your liking, but for green teas, if you use hotter temperature and um, longer time, it makes the tea more concentrated. There's more an extraction um, happening so it becomes really strong. If it ever becomes too strong or you feel like you're getting a stomach ache or a headache, you can always water down your tea to kind of lessen the amount of tannins that are concentrated in your brewed cup. So I'm just doing a quick steeping here, but preferably two to three minutes. And remember, you can re-steep your tea leaves up to four times. Depending on the teas and some of our amazing award-winning oolongs, you can re-steep um, up to eight times. So just see how long your tea can last. And you might actually prefer the second or third time because it actually might become more flavorful with the leaves opening up. It has this nice, smooth, almost like nuttiness to it because it is the stems and the twigs left over from the tea. It shouldn't be too harsh or too grassy. And it's a great tea, especially if you want something with a little bit less caffeine later in the day and you want to still experience your delicious cup of green tea because you just love the taste of green tea. Remember, this is not made from the whole pure meat of the leaf, not like a matcha. Um, it won't be as concentrated in all um, its potency of vitamin K, um, vitamin E, chlorophyll and such because it is the leftover parts. However, however, it is still an amazing, delicious um, green tea from Japan and not all green teas from Japan are equal. Not all kukichas are equal. So it really depends on that base plant that determines the rest of its quality. 
So, um, and it's nutritional benefits. So remember, teas have a shelf life, and that has to do with the potency of the essential oils. However, um, it will not be, it won't go moldy or anything unless it has a moisture introduced to it. So if you keep your tea in a dry place, and even if it's 10 years old, you can use it. It just won't be as potent in, in its essential oils because they will probably have oxidized. But anyways, if you want to learn more about tea, hop into the Sipping Shrooms private Facebook group called the Sipping Shrooms Tea Tribe, where we teach free classes every few months. And sign up today and find out when our next class is. Thank you so much. And let your friends and family know about our wonderful YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Thanks.